In a world where rock bands are constantly trying to break into the mainstream by incorporating modern pop sounds into their music, there only seems to be one band who have been able to do it and do it on their own terms. And that band is the brilliant Panic at the Disco. Not only are these guys one of the best rock bands on the planet, but they're also writing better pop songs than most of the big pop artists out there. The last time we saw Panic was on their brilliant 2016 record titled Death of a Bachelor, a record that saw the band break back into arenas all around the world. But today we hear talk about their latest effort, Pray for the Wicked. Panic have returned and proved themselves to be one of the finest pop rock bands on the planet. Every single Panic at the Disco record has had its own unique style and Pray for the Wicked is definitely no different. While Pray for the Wicked does pick up where Death of a Bachelor left off, it definitely has its own identity. And this record definitely incorporates more of a musical theater element than any previous Panic at the Disco record has, which is, probably to be expected considering Brendan Urie's recent stint in Broadway in the show Kinky Boots. And this influence is really evident on a track like Roaring Twenties, a song that even has a section where you'll see a lot of can-can going on in the crowd during the live show. I do think there are definitely less Frank Sinatra moments found on this record, unlike Death of the Bachelor, which had the title track, which really highlighted that influence. However, Brendan Urie still swoons his way all the way throughout Pray for the Wicked, especially on the pre-choruses of a track like High Hopes, where Yuri's downplayed vocal performance allows the chorus to really explode once it drops. And High Hopes is sure to be one of the biggest songs of the year. It has a very fun and anthemic feel to it. My god, it is just so goddamn catchy. I love the use of strings and horns throughout the verses of this track and they end up becoming hooks in of themselves. I think I'm safe in saying that Dancing's Not a Crime is easily one of my favourite Panic at the Disco songs ever released. It has such an upbeat and dancey vibe to it, obviously going off the title, and man, it's gonna sound massive live. The use of samples throughout the track is used to great taste and the final without me hook at the end of every chorus has been stuck in my head ever since I first heard it. On Pray For The Wicked, Brendan Urie's vocals are as brilliant as they have ever been. It's amazing to hear his progression from a frontman right out of high school to being one of the best vocalists on the planet. His range is absolutely stellar and how he picks his moments to add flourishes to the end of vocal lines takes so much skill. Not only that, but his growth as a songwriter since he took over as the sole member of Panic at the Disco is truly impressive. Every single record has gotten better and better and now Panic are in a place where they're as good as they have ever been. One of my favourite moments on Pray for the Wicked is definitely the saxophone hook that opens up the song Old Fashioned. It's a hook that has stuck with me ever since I first heard the record and I think it's such a cool different way to open up a song. I also really love the use of minimal instrumentation throughout the verses of this track. It really highlights Yuri's vocal performance and allows the chorus to really explode. Roaring Twenties, one of the drunks and old fashioned brings back some of the tonality that was explored on Panic's previous record, Vices and Virtues. I'm not sure what it is that reminds me of that record, but I think the theatricality is really brought to the forefront throughout those tracks and it's something that I really love. There's definitely a lot of personal subject matter that is explored all the way throughout Pray for the Wicked. On High Hopes, and hey, look, Ma, I made it. Yuri reflects on his brilliant career while reminding himself to stay humbled, while at the same time looking back and thinking, wow, I actually did it. There's tales of intoxication throughout Roaring Twenties and One of the Drunks, and Dying in LA talks about the toxic environment of living in LA and the loneliness that creeps into your life after living there for too long. Dying in LA really highlights just how great Brendan Urie is at writing piano ballads. This, along with End of All Things from Too Weird to Live, really highlights this. I think this track is one of Brendan Urie's best and most emotional vocal performances found on Pray for the Wicked. Everything really comes together on this track to create a beautiful, atmosphere and a perfect way to close out the record. The thing that really comes across throughout Pray for the Wicked is just how brilliant every single song is. There isn't a weak moment to be found here. And god damn they are all gonna sound amazing in the live environment. From the big horn choruses in the overpass to the massive groove that runs its way throughout Fuck a Silver Lining, this might be Panic at the Disco's biggest sounding record to date. Overall this is one of the very best records I've heard over the last few years, let alone this year. This record is easily Panic's best since Fever and over time it might even surpass it. Panic at the Disco have returned with what is possibly their best record to date and have shown why they deserve to be one of the biggest rock bands in the world. And that's all I've got for you guys. Make sure you follow all my socials down in the description and I'll see you guys next time.